Hi, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create a listing template like this for your post types inside of Elementor. In order to follow this tutorial, you will need Jet Engine installed. So let's jump into the back end and show you how easy it is to set up. What we need to do first is go underneath your Jet Engine and then click this button where it says Listings. Then what we need to do is create a new listing item. So go ahead and just click Add New. And for the listing source, you're just going to keep this at Post. And in my situation, these right here are a custom post type, but if you're using regular blog posts, this will work just as well. So if you're using something like regular blog posts, you would just select post. But in my situation, I'm using a custom post type called locations. So I'm just gonna select that right now. And let me just type in something like locations list. And then in this situation, we're gonna be using Elementor. So just go ahead and click create listing item. And as you can see, when you get in here, it's gonna be completely blank. So the first thing I recommend is click the cog button down here uh, under settings. Just go ahead and click that. And then underneath your listing settings, you're just gonna to wanna to make sure that you have the right post type. So in my situation, you just wanna make sure that locations is on right here. Then what we can do is just change the width of how wide these cards are gonna be. So in this situation, that's probably somewhere around 300 or 400. So let's just uh, type in 400 here. So that's gonna give you kind of like a real scale of how big your cards are gonna be. So now what we can do is start dropping in these dynamic widgets right here and the card's gonna to start to come to life. So in this situation, we just are gonna have a featured image right here. This is the post title. This is some meta information. We could do the date and then I'm gonna show you how to do the author right here. Uh, this right here could be your post content or an excerpt and then we're just gonna add like a button right here. So the very first thing is let's go underneath. Uh, you're gonna see this tab right here called listing elements. These are all the jet engine dynamic filters. So the first one is let's go ahead and drag in the dynamic image. As you can see, when you do that, your featured image is gonna come in. So now we can add the title. So what we can do is go underneath dynamic field right here. And you can see underneath source by default, it's pulling in the title correctly. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have this first one selected. And then the object field is title. So just go ahead and do that. And then of course you can style it up. So if we go underneath the HTML tag and you make this like an H2 or something, you can see right there, it's automatically gonna size it depending on how you have your H tag set up. So now let's go ahead and pull in the meta information. So we can pull in the date and the author. So let's go into here. And this one right here where it says dynamic meta, this is pulling in the meta information for that feed. And as you can see by default, it pulls in the date author in the comments. Let's go ahead and just delete the comments. And then underneath author, uh, you can put in the word author right here if you want. And then you can see it's gonna put the word author in front of the name of the author. So that looks pretty good right there. And if you start to realize that there's all of these big gaps right here, what you can do is go into your main container. And depending on how you have your settings, by default, everything's like 20 pixels. So if I go ahead and just zero this out, you can see there's no longer gonna be these gaps in between your different elements. So depending on how you have everything set up, you may wanna zero out your gaps on your main container. So now what we can do is pull in these excerpts right here. So you can go underneath the dynamic field and just pull that in. And in this situation, you can go underneath, make sure you have post term usage, the very first one selected, and you can do excerpt. So by default, I actually do not have these as excerpts. These are the content of the post itself. But what I like is there's this button right here to automatically gen generate it for you. And then inside of here, you can change the length of this. So if you change this to like a 20, it's not gonna show up on the back end, but on the front end, it will cut it down to like 20 words. So I think that looks pretty good right there. So actually, let's go ahead and add some default uh, gaps in between our elements. So in this situation, zero was a little bit too tight. So let's just do something like eight. And you can see that's not too bad. And then if you ever need to do custom spacing, you can always just select the widget itself and then start to add any margins or padding right here. And the final thing we can do is add a dynamic link. So if you just click and drag in dynamic link, this is gonna pull in the permalink. So as you can see, this is what you want is the permalink to your post. So in this situation, it just looks like text. But if you need this to look more like a button, you can go underneath your styling right here. And you could always just change the background of this. So let's go ahead and add the blue. And you can see we can do like the text color. We can do like a white. 
And then you can add some like custom padding right here. It's a little much, so like 10. So you can see right here, you can make it look like a button. So now let's go ahead and the very last step is let's add a little bit of a background to the main container. So if I'm selecting the main container right here, what I like to do in a lot of cases is add a little bit of a background. So we could just do like a light gray. That way it kind of separates it out so it doesn't just fade right into the, the white gaps. So what we can do is just do something like that and that's it. So now you can go ahead and hit update and you now have your listing item ready. And now we can go on to a page and add it to a grid. And here we are inside of a blank Elementor page. And what you need to do is just type in the word listing. And then you're going to want to pull in this widget right here called the listing grid. So once you pull that in underneath your listings, we just need to do a search for the one we just created. And that was called locations list. So once you pull that in, you're going to see it pulls in everything we just created in our listing item. And like I said, these excerpts will not show like this on the front end. This is just something that is going to be on the back end. So once you do that, you can go ahead and if you need to make any sort of changes to your queries, you can always go underneath like your post queries and there's a whole bunch of different options inside of here. So if you need to order this in a different way, like instead of descending, you can go ascending by date. So there's a lot of different options in here. And then if you even want more advanced options, you can go ahead and create what they call a custom query. So that's going to be where you can do a lot of customizations. You're going to be able to do stuff that you won't be able to do within these queries. So this gives you a lot of flexibility. But in this situation, let's just keep it very simple. And what we're going to do is underneath our column number, we're just going to keep it as like a three column layout. And then depending on how you have your card set up, you may need to do this right here called equal columns height. What that's going to do is fill in any gaps like this if the content is longer in one column. So if I enable this, you're going to see it automatically will stretch that down. So you can go ahead, just hit update, and then we can see how this performs on the front end. And here we are on the front end of that page. And let's go ahead and just scroll down and make sure everything looks good. And yeah, everything seems to be working correctly. You can see it's pulling the featured image, the title. We got the date right here. We got the author. And then this right here was that excerpt where I told it to be 20. So you can see right here, it's just making it 20 words. So that works out great. And then if I click on one of these, it should go to that blog post. France, and I like to click on one more just to check. So Ireland should go to the Ireland post. And that's it for this tutorial on how to create a listing template using Jet Engine. Thank you for watching.